You're listening to the Public Health Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Dr. Charlotte Huntley. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this episode. On this podcast, we explore all topics of interest for professionals who are at this intersection of public health and entrepreneurship. My name is Dr. Charlotte Huntley, and I'm thrilled that you've decided to join me on this episode. I say that in every episode. I genuinely mean that. I'm a public health entrepreneur, as well as having over 20 years of experience in healthcare and in public health, and I've supported so many other entrepreneurs along the way. I'm also a podcaster ever since 2017. So I absolutely love this platform, although this is a relatively new podcast. I have been in this game for a very long time. So the topic of this particular episode is really revolving around helping you attract clients by considering podcasting as a way of doing so. So establishing thought leadership to help you attract clients to you as a podcast guest Have you thought about that? Would you like to be a guest on someone's podcast? That's a whole set of topics of how to do that. But what I really want you to focus on here is just the benefits of that, how you can establish your thought leadership by being a guest on the right podcast and using that to help you attract clients, your ideal clients, your way. So you can absolutely do this by hosting your own podcast. There's a whole lot involved with hosting your own podcast. And I spent two episodes actually diving into all topics, you know, around this topic of hosting your podcast. So that is PHE, the Public Health Entrepreneurs episode 17, which is around, should I start a podcast? And then episode 18, which is around monetizing the podcast. So you can refer to that in terms of hosting your podcast, like starting your own podcast and the benefits of establishing your thought leadership and how you can attract clients your way. You can dive in there. On this episode, I really want to talk about the perspective of being a guest on a podcast, which is a great route to take before you even consider having your own podcast. So as a podcast guest, you are invited to be on a show. So this podcast, Public Health Entrepreneurs Podcast, is a show. And each of these episodes that come out twice a week are the episodes of the podcast. So what you're listening to right now is episode 30 of the Public Health Entrepreneurs Podcast, which is the show, okay? So here are some tips for establishing thought leadership by being a guest on a podcast and attracting clients your way. So that means that you're going to imagine someone has invited you to be a guest on their podcast and you get to show up and they interview you and showcase your business and everything about you on this episode, okay? So the first thing I want you to remember is to make sure that the podcast audience is relevant and a good fit for you and your topic, the focus of your business or the topic that you're establishing your expertise or your leadership around. It should be a mutually beneficial exchange. In other words, they want to hear from you as much as you want to share and connect with them. It can't just be you want that audience, you want them to connect with you they also should be really interested in hearing what you have to say. So it really is a mutual fit so that the exchange is beneficial for both sides, for both parties, the audience members and for you as the guest. So another thing I want you to be aware of or to consider is focus on giving value through your conversations with the host. So again, the host of that podcast has invited you to be their guest. So you want to focus on sharing value of some sort. Focus on sharing with the audience and being yourself. Don't try to be anything other than that. Don't get upset and uptight or nervous or try to act like a certain other type of person or don't do any of that. Be yourself, authentically who you are. Open up and share from your experiences because the people who are tuning in want to hear what you have to say about the topic. So maybe it's a common topic, like we use an umbrella of public health. What is public health? What does public health mean to you? Those types of questions can yield a standard answer, but not when you're thinking about what public health means to you. If someone is asking you to define something like public health or epidemiology or consulting, you can give a definition, right? That is common knowledge, but then 
add to that what it means to you or something that's filtering it through your lens, because that's what people want to hear from. They want to hear what your thoughts are and what you have to say about whatever the topic is and whatever question you're answering. So just remember to really be yourself and engage with the host because that makes for a great experience for the listeners. Okay. So another thing I would love for you to consider in this exchange and this as an opportunity for establishing thought leadership and attracting clients is share stories and examples of your experience in a way that demonstrates your level of knowledge and authority on a topic while also demonstrating your empathy or or passion for the topic as well. So if you think of a topic, I'm going to use diabetes for example. I can give you some very factual information about diabetes. And if I'm a guest and that's the topic, I may lead with some very factual, common knowledge, but I may respond in that way. But I'm also going to go a few steps further because diabetes is very personal to me. I have my mother, my grandmother who both had diabetes. My grandmother actually died early from complications of unmanaged diabetes. My mother-in-law recently passed away from complications to uncontrolled diabetes. I have diabetes and I work really hard to do all the lifestyle changes and to really incorporate and embrace this different, this healthier lifestyle for myself because of that. It's my motivator. So for me to share on a topic of diabetes, I'm not just going to leave it at some factual general knowledge or information. I will personalize and share stories. I may talk about what I remember seeing in the view as a child. I may talk about it from my personal story of when I was diagnosed and and how I got there and what I do. But that's an opportunity for me to share on a topic that is, I'm going to establish my thought leadership by, of course, giving you the factual details and information, but also filter it through my own personal lens, because I will choose to open up and be a little bit more vulnerable in a story like that and share from a personal perspective. So I'm not saying how far you need to go. But there's an opportunity for you to share stories and examples of your experience in a way that demonstrates your level of knowledge and authority on a topic while also demonstrating your passion or your empathy for that topic as well. All right. So the next thing for you to consider or that I'd like to share with you in terms of tip here would be to make sure that the audience knows about the problem you solve and how to work with you. Now we're talking about your business specifically. So where I may share on a topic of diabetes from my personal perspective, and I would choose to open up a bit more because as a black woman who is a public health entrepreneur and focused on serving BIPOC organizations. So our target, our ideal clients through my consulting firm are those organizations that are serving BIPOC communities. So black, indigenous, and people of color. So for me to share our expertise, my expertise, or to be more vulnerable and share that part of me is my choice to be vulnerable. But I think that it also allows for the listener to know that this is who I serve through my business. This is also a population that I represent. This is very near and dear because the work that we do is epidemiology specific in public health. So often we are helping these BIPOC community leaders translate or explain their data, their health information to communities that they serve in a way that the communities can really understand and reduce and eliminate that confusion and and room for misinformation to wiggle in there. So when we're dealing with these niche populations on topics that can sometimes be complex, like maybe diabetes, if they're trying to put together fact sheets or deliverables into the communities, then they want to work with someone like our company that is intentional about serving BIPOC-focused organizations, and also intentional about helping them to relay that information, creating reports and fact sheets and deliverables that can be easily understood by the members of their community. So for me, if I were a guest on a show, and if I were to be asked a topic like that, of course, I would want to share, and this is nothing made up. This is real. This is my life. But this is a part that I would choose to share on because it is very aligned with where I serve and really a lot of the why I serve these populations and why it matters to me. So now you've got my full story, right? Take that and insert your own. Think about a podcast as a guest on a show, because even in any situation, but specifically because we're talking about as a guest on a podcast, often the host may give you an idea of 
what the questions might be, or you've listened to them interview other people, you get a sense of the kind of flow of the show. And you can decide what's an open door for you to talk about and what you really maybe prefer not to go into more deeply, where you would choose to be vulnerable and open and share stories and and where you would hold back maybe or, or choose not to. But my encouragement here is for you to think about the fact that this is an opportunity to make sure that the audience understands the problem you solve through your business and how to work with you. That's really important. So not only are you demonstrating through your stories and sharing, you're really building that connection, but you want to make sure at the end of this conversation, somewhere in this conversation, that that audience knows about the problem you solve through your business and how to work with you. So I've inserted in there with you all. Now we're talking, this is about entrepreneurship, but I've also inserted in there to let you know how I work through my consulting firm, who we serve and what we do. I took that opportunity to share that with you, right? So the next step would be my website or how to connect with me. But when you're the guest and you're on that episode, then you'll be given that opportunity at some point. Either the guest may reference the description or the show notes to find links. Make sure that that podcast host has all the relevant links for you. But if they give you the opportunity to say it on the episode, make sure it's easy for people to know how to work with you. Okay, so the last thing I'll wrap up with you in terms of these tips is when this is all done well as a guest on a podcast, the audience will feel a bit of a connection with you. They get to know you, they get to like you a little bit and start to build trust. Now we buy from, and this is like, I've heard this so many times, I can't really reference it. I think of it as a commonly used phrase, but we buy from and do business with people that we know, like, and trust. So when you're a guest on a good episode with a podcast host, then you've gone several steps into building that no like and trust factor with the listener of a podcast because that's a very intimate conversation. People are listening intently. You're in their ears while they're walking or exercising or working sometimes, but that goes a long way with developing a connection. And if it's a video podcast, like if they're recording this and, and creating video clips from it, then I think that that's only amplifies this factor. So there's a lot of things to consider. So if you're looking for your next client. I mean, we always are as business owners, right? We're always ready for that next client. So I think that it's important to consider becoming a guest on a podcast that is a good fit as a really good opportunity for you to establish thought leadership and help you attract your next clients. It's a great way to keep your pipeline of clients flowing to you. Podcasts never expire either. So that's another good thing. Uh, Often, here's an extra, extra tip on here for you. As a podcast host myself, there's a lot of work that goes into putting together a show. So if you're invited to be a guest on someone's podcast, be the best guest you can be. In other words, when that host puts out the episode, share it and reshare it. That's a very digital business card for you. That's your story. That's your your feature. Share it on social media. Don't just share it when it first comes out, but share it often because it doesn't expire. People can discover you through a podcast guest appearance that's a year or more old. So those are great opportunities that are long lasting. So share them widely and broadly because that's a great way to thank the host and you know bring more awareness to their podcast show, but also for you to get more and more people to understand your authority and, and what your topic that you've built and established as authority on and how to work with you and the problems that you solve through your business. Okay. As you can tell, I love podcasts and all things podcasts. So I could go on and on and on about this. I want to let you know or remind you that we have an awesome mastermind group program that is best suited for established public health entrepreneurs, where we work together online and also gather together in person for a two-day retreat twice a year. Now, we've had entrepreneurs come from all over the U.S. as well as other countries like the U.K. We've even had someone travel the far distance of coming to Florida from Guam. Now, retreats are in person, different locations, but this particular one was in Florida. Enrollment is only open twice a year. So that's June and December and only to people who have submitted an application. So if you'd like to know more about our mastermind group program, then please visit our website and submit an application at publichealthentrepreneurs.com. 
you can find the links in the description of this episode as well. Now, I really appreciate you tuning in throughout this whole episode, and I hope that this has been helpful for you and you would at least consider becoming a guest on someone's podcast and you'll incorporate some of the tips I've shared with you to make this most impactful for yourself and for that podcast, the whole podcast experience. All right, everyone, until next time, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Visit publichealthentrepreneurs.com to learn more.